Hi everyone, we're talking about three very important considerations we need to make when we're taking metformin. These are often not thought about, but they're very important. Before we talk about those three important considerations, let's talk about what metformin is and what it does. So metformin is a medication used to lower or reduce blood glucose levels. It's used to treat type 2 diabetes, but also other conditions like polycystic ovary syndrome. And with regards to its ability to lower blood glucose, it does this by the following mechanisms. One is that it inhibits gluconeogenesis in the liver, so that's the production of glucose from non-glucose substrates. It's also involved in inhibiting glucose uptake from the gastrointestinal system, so from the small intestine, it can help reduce the absorption of glucose. And it also increases insulin sensitivity, so it does this through increasing the sensitivity and the activation of the insulin receptor. Now, the problem is, is that metformin may cause a variety of mild and or severe side effects and complications. And some of the most common side effects of metformin use include gastrointestinal upset, like diarrhea, and also issues with nausea and vomiting as well. Now, let's talk about three important considerations to make when using metformin. The first is going to be to avoid its use in certain patient populations. And this comes down to the black box warning with regards to metformin. The black box warning with regards to metformin has to do with lactic acidosis. So metformin can increase the risk of lactic acidosis in especially certain patient populations. This is going to be a very important finding. So lactic acidosis is going to be a significant complication of metformin use, and it can cause significant signs and symptoms, including tachycardia or high heart rate, hypotension or low blood pressure, and tachypnea or an increase in respiratory rate. So patients who are at an increased risk of lactic acidosis include the following. Patients with cirrhosis or end-stage liver disease, so if there's issues with the functioning or in health of the liver. We can also see it in patients who have kidney disease, so metformin is excreted from the kidneys. So if there's issues with excretion of metformin, this can lead to increased levels of metformin. We can also see increased risk of lactic acidosis in patients with congestive heart failure and in patients who are heavy alcohol consumers. So all of these patient populations should avoid using metformin because of the increased risk of lactic acidosis. And one other group of patients that should avoid using metformin but not due to lactic acidosis is patients who have had a previous allergic reaction to metformin. So that is also something to make note of as well. Another important consideration with regards to metformin is hypoglycemia. So hypoglycemia is a low blood glucose level. This is actually considered a less common side effect of metformin use, but there is an increased risk of hypoglycemia in certain patient populations and in certain medical states. These include the following, alcohol intake, so patients who are consuming alcohol are at a higher risk of having not only lactic acidosis, but also hypoglycemia, patients who are dehydrated, those who are fasting, so in patients who are not eating or drinking, this can be a problem, in patients who are exercising, especially excessive exercise, patients who are malnourished, those who have undergone surgery or have had some trauma, the elderly, so anybody that's greater than 80 years of age is at a higher risk of having hypoglycemia. And then patients who are also on other blood glucose lowering medications, so this can increase the risk of hypoglycemia. And then patients who have a fever or infection. All of these situations can increase the risk of hypoglycemia, so this is going to be an important consideration to think about with regards to metformin that's not often discussed. And the third important consideration with regards to metformin that is not discussed either is vitamin deficiency. So individuals who are on metformin can have a vitamin B12 or cobalamin deficiency. This is more likely to occur in long-term users of metformin. And in some patients, the vitamin B12 deficiency can be severe enough to cause signs and symptoms of a vitamin B12 deficiency. These include macrocytic anemia, depression or other psychological findings, and also neurological symptoms as well, including paresthesias or numbness and tingling sensation in the extremities. So what can be important is to increase vitamin B12 in these patients. So vitamin B12 supplementation is going to be important, especially in patients who are long-term users of metformin. Please check out my lesson on what to avoid when you're taking metformin and also metformin side effects. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.